last week I taught you how to hold the crown molding in the saw and to position it correctly. Now it's time to learn how to do the inside and outside corners. Okay, great. Here we've got a beautiful example of an inside corner and an outside corner that are very close to one another. Now, what do you do to make the cuts? Well, the thing I like to do, I make small test pieces that show a perfect 90 degree outside corner and a perfect 90 degree inside corner. Now these little test pieces are very important because they help teach you how to hold the crown molding in the saw when you go ahead and make your cuts. Now for example, remember on an inside corner, the longest part of the molding after the cut is made is the bottom of the cut, is the bottom of the piece. And on an outside corner, the exact opposite true. When you hold the crown molding up on the wall, you'll notice that the longest point is the top of the molding. Keep that in mind. Now, remember, you have to hold the crown molding upside down in the saw to make all this work correctly. And what I like to do sometimes is take a small piece of tape and actually mark the table of the saw and remind myself that that's the ceiling or the top of the molding and that the vertical part of the miter box saw, the, which we call the fence, put a piece of tape there that says that is the wall. Alrighty, see how these test pieces fit? Well, let me tell you another advantage of using them. They help you avoid waste. Go ahead, cut your test pieces, make sure you understand the relationship, put them up on the wall and the ceiling. Once you got it down pat, then you're ready to advance to the big, long pieces. Hope your crown molding goes well. If you want to discover more home improvement tips, go to askthebuilder.com.